Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It's Wade T. Lightheart from Bioptimizers with another edition of the Awesome Health Podcast. And I am excited today because we have a celebrity chef to join us today. Our guest is Serena Poon, and she is going to talk about culinary alchemy, which is health optimization, nourishing our bodies through food, boosting the immune system, way to get better sleep, superfood, supplementation tips, and more. Now, Serena is a celebrity chef, a nutritionist, and a Reiki master to the Hollywood elite. Her passion and career for curating healing and wellness programs using integrative health, holistic nutrition, and culinary alchemy, which we will be talking about. And this began long before she started creating contemporary meals, menus, and nutritional goodness for the likes of Jerry Bruckheimer, Sean P. Diddy Combs, and Carrie Washington, just to name a few. And she combines, it's the practice of combining intuitive energetic techniques with guidance and education on functional and spiritual nutrition, integrating how food affects our bodies on a physiological level, as well as how it affects our energetic bodies. And this is really interesting. I think you've been into uh, quantum touch healing. Mm -hmm. uh, you're a Reiki master mm -hmm. and you have a degree from UC Berkeley. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, man, <laughs> supplement brand kind of like, mm -hmm. welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much. That was so fun. I don't think I've ever had an intro like that. And I'm listening. I'm like, wow, he's awesome at this like this i i love how you did that thank you very much that was so much fun <laughs> well thank you so much I, I, I well i i'm always excited to get with the new guests I'm not, when i bring people on the podcast it's because i'm genuinely interested in what they're doing so ah, i'm curious I, I, as soon as i see this culinary alchemy mm -hmm. i'm like so do we like are you sitting there with like beakers and stoves and things going and like <laughs> like eye of bat and toe of newt or what's what is culinary alchemy and how like maybe you give us a backstory of how you ended up into this culinary actor uh, alchemy and then yeah. dealing with the who's who of hollywood that's like mm -hmm. like that's a pretty interesting journey that there's there's definitely a lot to write about there um, as long as I navigate it around the NDAs, there's all kinds of stories. <laughs> sure, right, exactly. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, but um, yeah, no, I mean, it's uh, it's funny because you're talking about beakers and 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 chemistry, but alchemy, it's it's magic, right? Like what you're creating in that in that chemistry lab or physics, it's all magic, and that's really what I think in my very humble opinion, what I've created by merging, you know, that science and spirituality together, you know, I, my journey began with my parents, really, you know, my daddy was diagnosed stage four liver cancer when I was still in college. And that at the time, I was studying nutrition just because I had an interest, love food, love to eat. You know, the kitchen's always been the center of our home and probably many others. And um, I was actually studying to be an attorney. You know, it was political science. That was what my degree was, was, was in because first generation Chinese American, I'm either supposed to be a lawyer, a doctor, a scientist, a dentist, I don't know, an astronaut, like something, right? So, so I chose the lawyer route. And so, and my daddy at the time was in his forties, you know, he was like 47 when he was diagnosed and he had had a blood disease, you know, he was hep B, he had, you know, the same thing that my, his grandpa had died from the same thing. So he was diagnosed stage four and it immediately just, it shifted my whole life. And I started looking at plants and herbs, you know, to see how I could, what we could do to help alleviate some of his symptoms. Um, you know, knowing that, you know, he was so far along, we weren't sure what we could do with the cancer. He was already doing allopathic medicine, chemo radiation. He was drinking all kinds of crazy teas that we got shipped in from China. Um, and so that's, that's when I first started looking outside of the box, right? Um, and then after about a year and three months, our daddy transitioned and um, our mom was diagnosed with cancer like two months later, you know, she's oh, wow. 45. So it was just, it was, it was such a journey and such an intense time. And 
And I think that that's part of the reason why I really started to go outside of the box. You know, there was like part of me that was like, okay, everyone just need, I need to make sure everyone's healthy and happy and doing all the things that from a very traditional point of view you do. Um, but what that ended up happening was I took self care out of that, you know, and I'm so focused in on making sure mom's okay. And she's with us. She's still with us, um, making sure that mom's okay, that I wasn't taking care of myself. So that led me into a journey where I had so much inflammation inside my own body that I had to have surgery to remove some damaged tissue internally. I ended up getting MRSA, MRSA, from straight from the OR. Uh, and then that became that became my health journey for the next eight years. I ended up having eight surgeries. I almost died after like two of them, but like really scary, almost died after one of them. And it would be in that period of time that culinary alchemy really came to be because I was already doing all the nutrition. You know, I was, I already knew what to put into my body in terms of like food and supplements and um, just nutrients. I was already doing the movement. You know, I already had the exercise there. I already did all of that. I was adding in some mindfulness, but I hadn't taken like a proper meditation class yet, but I, I was aware. And, and here I was in a place where I, my fourth surgery, I had a massive hematoma, 12 days post-op, lost like almost two liters of blood. It's like 30% of your of the blood in your body it was so scary. And, and it's a long story. We can either dive into or save for another time, but from that experience, you know, I, I had angels around me. They saved my life. I am now post that operation waiting for the next one to heal the damage inside. And I was in such a dark place. It was such a place. And, and I started thinking like, what am I missing? You know, like I, I'm doing all the right things on the outside. I look like a vision of health, but inside I've got this MRSA and I'm not totally healthy. And and so I started, I had been talking to an, a healer uh, maybe a year before, but I was treating her like a 911 call. You know, I'm not, I'm not being consistent with her with that, that spiritual practice like I was with food and nutrition and exercise. So I committed to just talking to her every three or four weeks and making that part of my practice. And in that practice, you know, after about nine months, she was eight, nine months, she was like, wow, you know, I, I really like what I'm seeing. She's explaining all the things to me. It's kind of just going in one ear and out the other. I'm just like, I feel better and you're happy with it. She told me, I want you to come out and, and, and meet me, you know, and at this point I'd never met her. She was someone that was referred to me, one of my best friends whose family worked with her in New Mexico. She was in Santa Fe. And the long and short of it is she wanted me to go out there and she wanted me, she wanted to teach me everything that she does because she, she works directly with people and then distally, which is how I was receiving her energy. And it took me about four months because at first I was like, what? You know, you're like my person and you're a man, you know what you're doing. I don't know. What you're, I don't know. No, no. But it took me about four months and I finally went out there. And I stayed with her for the weekend and she was like this little lady in her like 70 and, and she taught me everything that she did. And at first it was very overwhelming to, that was the best word I could use. I just didn't even completely understand everything, but I started to practice. Um, and then over time, I realized I needed a little bit of structure because this was just her, her method, her way of doing it. Um, and so I started, I took Reiki because I needed some structure. And I realized that fusing that energy and really combining, supporting, you know, our physical bodies, our physical bodies with nutrition and all of everything that we get from food, but also using food as that vehicle to support our energetic bodies, you know, to support our chakras, because our, our energetic body, our energetic centers are in alignment with the physical organ systems of our body as we go up and down the chakra system I just realized like this was this was that piece that I wasn't doing and let me just try this you know let me start diving into the energy of food the vibrations and maybe if I'm healing you know this area of my body that where there's been infection where there's been 
MRSA, maybe if I do that, how, how can I, I wonder if it'll work, you know? And, and it was helping me a lot. So I started to apply that to my clients, you know, and bear in mind during this time that I was trying this, I was still trying to recover. You know, I, I couldn't use the upper left side of my body for about six months. So I couldn't cook. I couldn't, I couldn't be a chef to my clients. And I thought I have so much knowledge with nutrition and food and I'm treating myself like my own client. Um, how can I pivot this? How can I turn this into something else? How can I still serve them? And so that became my consulting practice that I, I started doing while I was waiting for myself to heal and then just peppering in like hmm, for the ones that are open, you know, let me, let me see if they're open to adjusting their protocol to adding this element in. And that's really what, how culinary alchemy just began. And I didn't call it that at the time. It was more like a term I used to describe, you know, what I was doing. And it was, it wasn't until years later that someone saw it and they're like, wait, what is that? And I'm like, oh, let me explain. And then it, be, and then we decided to coin it because, because that's what it is that I did. That's my practice today. Amazing. Um, I want to go back. I, I also, my sister, as many people know on this podcast, uh, died at an early age. So I was exposed to life and death relatively early, which I think the, the, the flip side of the, the tragedy of it, uh, when you experience that as a younger person, is that you see the impermanence of life and mm -hmm. that your health isn't a guarantee, your life's not a guarantee. But mm -hmm. you know, with your mom having challenges and then you yourself, mm -hmm. I mean... When you, I want to take you to the kind of the darkest place. When you said the darkest place, or when you're really fighting yeah. for your life, essentially, right? And you, you know, yeah. Um, what were some of the things that were going through your head at that time? Like, was it like, hey, this isn't fair? Why me? Or were you angry? Was there resentment? Like, what was going on yeah. you when you say, what's the darkest place? Because I think, you know, you look, yeah, picture of health and question. so radiance, you'd never know this. So, so, what was going on for you then? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. And you know, I, I'm, I don't even know if I've been asked that question before. So that's a really great question. So, so what led up to that was my fourth surgery. And what led up to that was just this back and forth struggle, you know, with the MRSA and just going to surgery, trying to get it out, not getting it out sick, and just kind of at this baseline that was, I look like I'm super healthy, but not feeling super healthy and constant level of tiredness and at that point I didn't have a real why like why me it was just sort of like oh this thing I gotta get it out you know and then it was like I'm just gonna live with it you know I'm just gonna like, F it I'm just gonna live with it I'm just over having all these surgeries so when when that and I, I can't it's not even like a moment because what was happening was I had a massive hematoma 12 days post-op so that means you're internally bleeding you know, and I had uh, one of the stitches inside. I had lost so much. They had removed so much tissue from these prior surgeries. They are now grafting in tissue. And one of the stitches tore um, muscle. So, and I didn't know what was happening. I just knew I was bleeding and it's bleeding internally. So, and the blood doesn't have a lot of places to go when right. you're bleeding internally like that. So I think in that moment, all I thought was, oh, I'm not ready. You know, that was like that thought at that moment, you know, and I have no fear of death because my daddy died in my arms. So that was a, that was a gift he gave to me was that I don't have a fear of like mortality. I don't fear that at all because because when someone you love so much and they transition, it's just like it, it becomes just another part of your journey and it can be a beautiful thing. It can be painful, but you, you know that they're forever. And so that was, there was no fear of that, but there was, there was the, the thought and the feeling that was like, oh, wait, I'm not afraid, but I'm not ready. And this feels terrible. And this is painful. Mm -hmm. And this is not how I want to transition in this mm -hmm. painful way, you know, and there is fear, but I think it's the fear of what's going to happen next. Am I just going to, is this just going to happen with me here by myself in my apartment? Is someone going to find me like I mean it was those were the thoughts and and then after you know and and I 
called, you know, a client of mine who's angels, they're angels, and they brought in, they called the doctor who had been a medical director at Cedars, and they took me there and basically saved my life, stopped the bleeding. That super dark time, it was in the recovery, right? In that in between. And there was some why me. You're absolutely in this victim state, you know, and, and I, and I'm not a victim, I'm not a victim, but I, I think we all go through periods of our life where we indulge in that victim mentality and victim state. And I definitely was because I was like, it wasn't even, I don't know if it was why me, but it was just like, what am I doing wrong? You know, like there was some why me, but it was more like, what am I doing wrong that I know I'm a good person what I'm doing is to help other people. I have been through so much already. And that was, I was only halfway through at that point. I was only four surgeries in and I'm having eight, but it was like, what am I, I seem to be the common denominator here. You know, like what, what is going on? What am I doing where these things are happening? And, and also is this, is this life? Like, is this what my life is going to be? And is this, what I want my life to be like no like I I my daddy didn't die at such a young age and we I didn't go through the things I did for this to be what my life is going to be where I'm sitting with my back up against the wall in my bedroom and I'm so I'm drenched in sweat because my body's trying to heal and it just been through all of this and I was you know it and and I thought nope this is not what life is going to be and it didn't t- it wasn't the first time I, I sat against that wall it took a couple weeks you know more than a couple weeks to be honest I don't remember how long but it definitely a few weeks in where I was like no this is not this is not what life is supposed to be like this isn't this isn't why my daddy left early and I'm supposed to be doing more and that was part of why I began my journey in the first place so it was a reminder that like I started off this journey with the intention of doing more, to take my dad's experience and what I learned and to help teach and serve, uh, help teach other people how to heal, how to optimize their health, help teach their caregivers, you know, the people they love, how you can help yourself and the people that you love. And I lost sight of that because I was sitting in a miserable place. Um, and, and in all fairness, I think that sometimes we have to embrace those feelings and those time Mm -hmm. periods, but -hmm. you don't sit in it forever, you know? And, and I got that reminder and was just like, well, no, this isn't what life is, is supposed to be. This is not life because you're supposed to be doing more. And so figure it out. What, what do you think was the ray of light or the turning point from that place? you know, like at what, what was the thing, you know, it's kind of like, you know, what turned the kind of that darkness around? Cause when you're in it, I think for a lot of people, it seems like it's forever in, mm-hmm. in the case when it's a life and death thing. It's, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's like, okay, this could be the cessation of physical mm-hmm. existence experience and who knows what else. Right. Um, right. What, so, what, what turned that around? What, what, what was the thing that brought you out of that? You know, it's kind of like what I was just saying. It's just, it's, for some people, the phrase is like, what's your why, right? Remembering your why. And I truly believe that we all have a why that doesn't include us, right? That's outside of us, that's beyond us. And for me, my why was the people that I love. You know, it was remembering that like, I am on this journey. I had gone to, to culinary school. You know, I was studying all these things. I had sh- completely pivoted my career. I was dealing with my family. Again, you know, Chinese American family, still supposed to be a doctor, you know, right. or a lawyer or something. And it was- There's an incredible um, amount of pressure culturally to kind of please the parents, oh, right? Yeah. And, and I think a lot of people don't understand that in the West, the, the, the difference. And I spent a lot of time in Asia and I have a lot of mm. um, friends from both China, Japan, and India mm-hmm. who have these long traditional, the yes. families, everything, and the, your name and how yes. this goes. And, you know, it's like if one of my friends says, yeah, it's like I've had a family member 
come out of this door by my name for the last 600 years mm-hmm. <laughs> you, has lived yeah. in the same house you wow. know it's like you know like that's that, that's longer than this country's even been in existence wow. or you know and so it's like yeah I think a lot of people in the west don't understand the familial yeah. pressure that's put on you and you had the courage to say no I'm not doing this what was oh, that yeah. like? Oh my gosh. I mean, it was, I, I brought shame, you know, to my right. family initially. It was like, what are you doing? Like, this is like your dad would be upset. You know, that's the worst when people say stuff like that because your dad's not here. And like, you know, and you know, your dad, your dad would be upset. Like, this isn't what he wanted. He'd be rolling over in his grave. Like you're, this is being a chef is like a, blue collar service position you're supposed to be in an academic you know white collar I mean this is all not my words you know this is the words I received and 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 I and that's just part of our culture you know it's just part of our culture and how my family and my elders were raised and so that's just that's just their belief system right and so it was tough and I had to I I think my, my grandparents, you know, my mom, and they were all, if anyone asked if we were out to eat and someone asked, oh, what is she? Oh, she's still in school. Like they didn't want anyone to know that like I was in culinary school or that I didn't have a job yet, you know, because right. here I am doing something. And, um, but then of course, once I graduated and once I started to build my clientele and have the kind of clients I have, then it, then it changed. You know, then it was then it was okay that I was a chef because I was working for these people, and so that was okay. But um, but yeah, you know, I think going back to your original question, it was connecting to my like my why, like why am I why am I sitting here? Like why am I here right now? Like what am I doing? Like what was I doing before I got into this place where I'm miserable? Like what was mm-hmm. I doing? I was. I was doing this for my clients. I was helping people. I was working on their health. And these were the ways I was doing it. And it was, and it sounds so crazy because it was such a simple shift. It was like, okay, this is how I was helping people. I was cooking for them and giving them, couldn't I help people in a different way? Like, couldn't I just take the same knowledge? And then that's how I did my, how I opened up the consulting aspect of it and just focus on that for almost the rest of the year, you know, until it's fully healed. But I think all of us have that why, like you might get up every single morning way earlier than you want to get up because your dog needs to go pee and you've got to take your dog out that your dog is your why that's greater than you. That's why you're getting up because if your dog was had an overnight play date somewhere else and you could sleep in for an extra hour, you might just do that. But every day you wake up early and you take your dogs out because that's what they need. And all of us, I think all of us has a why that's outside of us, outside of ourselves. And so you just need to remember what that is and then use that to help guide you, guide you out of a dark space. You know, um, that, that's what I did. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. So Thankfully, you came out the other mm. side and Thank you, you are known as a culinary alchemy chef. Or <laughs> I'm a nutritional energy practitioner. That's you know, right. what people are calling me now. And, and, and yeah. obviously, people who, many of your clients who can choose anybody are choosing you and they're choosing you for a reason. And that means that you bring some element to the culinary experience, which is... I think extraordinary. What is it that you bring? How do you do this? Like, what is it that makes the magic, if you will, mm-hmm. of your culinary creations? And now for a Bioptimizer's fixed digestion tip, supercharge your protein shake. Everyone knows protein shakes are a great way to sneak in extra protein, build more muscle, even replace meals and burn more fat. The problem is the highest quality protein typically absorbs at around 40%. One way to fix this and dramatically increase how quickly and effective your protein shake digests is to add two to three capsules of masszymes into your shake. One research study showed that pre-digested protein during a meal increased muscle growth significantly. 
To take advantage of this, just blend the open capsules into your shake and within 15 minutes or less, the enzymes will have begun to break down the protein into amino acids. This can make your shakes at least two to three times more potent. Some people do this and sip on their shake while lifting to provide their muscles with a steady stream of amino acids during their workout. To save 10% on masszymes, use the code SHAKE10, that's S-H-A-K-E-10, at masszymes.com. That's SHAKE10 at masszymes.com. And thank you for that. That's so kind. I appreciate your kind words. Um, you know, it's really, it, it's that combination. And I don't think that, I mean, I don't know if other people are out there doing it. My goal is to be able to teach as many people as possible how to do it so they can bring that magic into their homes, their families, into their clients. Um, but when I work with a client, it's, it's a very comprehensive approach. You know, I'm running labs and I've been doing it forever. So it's pretty awesome now that there's so many labs and you can, people can order their own labs now and submit their own samples to the mail. I mean, that's like, I, I think 10 years ago or longer than that, I would never have thought it would be that simple to do it. And it's, so it's incredible now that we have that kind of access, but I run labs, you know, to start when I work with a client and I'm, I mean, I, I break down those labs. So we really want to look at what's going on inside your body, your okay. inside your physical body. It's important to know that. What type but of labs it, do you like to run for people just to kind of give an indication? Is it like uh, blood sugar? Is it GI maps? Is it hormone? What is it that you're looking all at? All of them. I have you yeah. run like six, seven labs because right. you're not going to get the information you need from a standard CBC. I mean, that's almost like that only gives you a table of contents of what labs you have to order from. You know? Right. Um, so, so yeah, those type of labs, um, and, you know, depending on the age of my client or what, what, I, what shows up on CSCBC, we might dive into a little more detailed lab work on other aspects of their, uh, sexual health of their, of their brain health, their genetics, but I have them, you know, I run, we run these labs to see what's going on inside. And then of course it's an intake of who that person is. So, you know, I do an energy intake that I'm you know, we do some, we do some energy work if they're open, if they're not open to that, cause it's a little outside of what they're comfortable with. I make it very clear that I'm still going to be doing a little bit of an assessment from a purely energetic place of what's going on inside their bodies. And of course, what their goals are. And then we put together, we put together a protocol. So that protocol is really, you know, it's nutrition, obviously nutrition and supplementation, but also other modalities that complement, you know, what your goals are, complement your lifestyle. And obviously there's mindfulness and there's mindset. All of that is sort of built into all of it. Um, but I think, I think what makes people uh, come to me and refer me and stay with me is that it's really, it's sustainable. You know, it's, it's really about creating something that is sustainable and you don't feel like you are, you don't feel like you're lacking. You don't feel like you're not enough. You don't feel like you're not doing enough. You know, we may, we go, at, we do it step by step. I mean, we might just choose one or two things that we adjust and um, throughout the course of in the first, you know, two weeks or months that we work together. And I think I'm very careful with my language, you know, so it's really about all the things you can choose from, you know, to fill your day and to fill your plate, not so much things that you cannot have, you know, because the things that you quote cannot have are things that maybe your body doesn't want right now. So let's just give your body the things your body wants and what it's going to thrive from and heal from. And so, you know, it's a, it's, it's, it's a lot of things, you know, so we do all of that. It's very comprehensive um, and it's very personalized. And I'm, what I'm doing is just creating programs that you kind of get the same essence of it, even if you don't get a chance to work with me one-on-one. And that's what I'm, you know, in the process of working on so that people can still get as close to a personalized uh, program or protocol as possible. Um, but yeah, I think that's why they keep coming back. And a lot of that is just the energy between us. And, and some people don't even realize how much they love energy work. They just don't like necessarily talk about it or, or know how to talk about it. And 
I also do a lot with crystals as well. It's all part of all the different modalities. It's, it's beautiful and, and fun. And, and I think a lot of people might get wonder about energy or energy work mm. or spirituality or those things. And, but I think everybody can agree. There's some people that you feel great around and some people mm. that you don't, there's some yeah. environments that you feel great around and some that you don't. And there needs to be a resonance. And we kind of talked about this earlier, but because yeah. in the background, we were actually listening to kind of the same thing in the, in the background mm-hmm. noise, which is kind of cool. Um, what are some of the things that you've noticed um, on a general basis that people might not know about creating kind of the alchemic, al- alchemic, what did you say? Alchemic, I guess would it be? Alchemic okay. creations um, when it comes to food. Is there some, is there some rules? Or is there some th- guidelines? Is there some tips? Is there, is there a methodology or a way of approaching the creation of food mm. in, in a way that allows for the alchemy to flow, if you will, if that makes any sense. Oh, no, it totally does. And it's a great question. And I really like to just, I, I like to just make it super simple. You know, there's something I, I'm always talking about, eat the rainbow, you know, eat the rainbow as much as possible. And it sounds so simple and almost like too basic, but it's not because if you really think about what it means to eat the rainbow, First of all, you're getting the whole spectrum of phytonutrients, vitamins and minerals, if you're able to choose all the different colors and make sure you get all those colors in on your plate, in your bowl, in your body at some point throughout the course of a day. You know, no, if you can do it in one meal, awesome. But if you can't, you know, you have a whole day to get all the different colors of the rainbow into your body, right? And what you're also doing is you're also nourishing your chakra system. Now, you know, if you want to really dive into it, you know, we have more than seven chakras, but just for the purposes of making it very general and and digestible, uh, let's just focus on those seven, right? And then they align with the different colors of the rainbow that just make it visually very easy to connect to and to know that, you know, if you need some grounding, then you want to eat foods that are nourishing for your root, for your root chakra. And those, those connect with, foods, root vegetables that come from the earth, you know, and, and color and foods that are, are red, you know, have shades of red. Now, what we don't realize is, it's like those root vegetables, they are mineral rich, which actually help from a physical place, really calm you down, you know, rich in magnesium, rich in these minerals that really help soothe and calm your nervous system. And from an inner place of energy to connect you with mother earth. You know, and we talked just now about energy and resonance and everything has a resonance and everything carries a frequency and vibration. And so when you're eating foods that are connected to that grounding earth energy, it actually helps to ground you as well. So, you know, I would say that that like, again, eat the rainbow it sounds so simplistic, but if you really think about it from a place of science and spirituality, it, it makes so much sense, super easy to check off. It's easy to remember that way. You don't have to remember like the list of the vegetables and fruits for like each chakra, right. you know, and each, right. each organ system. It's just like, if you just do that, you are nourishing every part of you just at least a little bit. And if you're doing it on a regular basis, that adds up, you know, like those little, those little micro steps, those, they add up and they start to compound and it becomes, it becomes health and vitality and vibrance. So, so yeah. One of the things that I I have encouraged my clients in the past and I do on a daily basis or almost Mm -hmm. every day, sometimes I don't, if Mm -hmm. I'm fasting or whatever, isn't that is I eat a rainbow salad and I try to put as many colors. And back in the day when we could actually go get a salad at Whole Foods or at Air One and stuff, Mm -hmm. I would always go to the salad bar all the time. I love doing it. And I would pull these beautiful, ginormous salad bowls Yes, with all these colors and Every, like virtually every single time I would be Mm -hmm. in the checkout line Mm -hmm. or at the checkout itself and someone would comment, oh my God, that looks so amazing. Mm -hmm. Like across the board, people would recognize that that was good for you. And I always found that really striking. And um, I miss those days. I hope they come back, 
because I loved going out to a public place yeah. and, and going through my, I, I was a salad bar master because that, yeah. that was my creation point. And um, that's so, and that's, and that's exactly it, right? It's really not that hard, right? And, and the best part is, and as a chef, you know, people are eating with their eyes as much as they are with their mouth. So when something is like bright and vibrant and full of life and beautiful, like you're already, your brain is already connecting to that. Like your brain is already receiving that in a way and you are already shifting your system into this parasympathetic state of like receiving and, and opening up your digestion to receive that nourishment. So, so yeah, again, sounds super simple, but checks off so many boxes, you'd be shocked. How many, um, or what are some other things that you tend to do in your culinary creations? Like what are some other things that you feel are important to really, you know, develop foods that nourish you on all these different levels? What, what are some things that you've learned or noticed or practice? So, um, so thank you. You know, another great question. Um, whether when I'm talking about eating like the rainbow, you know, I think that the salad is a great example, but I will do things like create dips and sauces, you know, um, something that I love to do for my clients is show them how they can prep something out at the beginning of their week and make it really colorful, but showing them how they can take this one three hour period and they can make all these creations in a different way. So we'll prep out. I love dips and hummus because they're very nutrient dense. They've got, and I'm plant-based, so there's a lot of plant protein built into it, but we make them vibrant. You know, we make them colorful. So they're colorful for your palate, but they're also colorful for your eyes. And so that's something that's very helpful because let's say you are feeling like you're not in your power right now and you've got to go do this interview, you know, with an incredible host like Wade. And, and you're thinking, I just need something that's just going to give me that confidence. And you can go make yourself like, like, um, you know, a, a, a smoothie that's full of, full of beautiful yellow colors, you know, and that's great for your solar plexus. And that's great for boosting your confidence. And at the same time, it's got tons of vitamin C and it's got all the, depending on what you put in it, if you're going to put pineapples or mangoes, whatever it is that you're going to put in it, all of those vitamins and nutrients are going to give you that energy burst. And it's going to give you that internal radiance. And at the same time, you're nurturing that area of your body, you're nurturing that energy center. So I like to create things that are simple that you can just keep in your fridge that you can reach for when people are feeling, you know, having the symptoms where they might need support in different areas, whether it's being grounded or, or feeling stressed or anxietized or maybe not, not confident or feeling that you know, they, they're not speaking their truth or having a headache because there's too much going on in their crown and in their thoughts. So that's what I like to do and create for my clients that are at least give them like a list of things that you want to have around. And I love juices, you know, juices and smoothies are such a simple, easy way to get in a ton of nutrients, um, a ton of vitamins, but at the same time, it's almost like instantly it goes right to that area of your body of your energy center and it supports that that area so those are some of the things that i love to do and yes. daily daily detoxing you know daily cleansing so really big on hydration really big on hydration you got to do your lemon water first thing in the morning i say that to everybody um i've got all my clients doing that and that's a really that's a really important aspect of alchemy because we're made up of we're made up of water you know we're 60 70 percent water and that water not only helps our physical body function efficiently but it also helps with the flow of energy so that's why anytime you get energy work you know anytime you're even getting body work they tell you you got to drink a lot of water because it just helps things flow and move out and you know release and then cleanse yeah i've been a big advocate of, of super hydration and uh, Dr. Pollock's work talks about how water exists both as a solid, a liquid, a gas, and a crystal. And the crystal mm -hmm. contains, I think, 440,000 information panels of storage. So yes. our personality, our emotions, our ability to communicate and resonate mm -hmm. is because of the crystalline features within water. Yes, and it's fascinating. Matrix. 
Yeah. And we have mm-hmm. this power with us. So it's innate with us. What's your take on kind of um, maybe people who seek out kosher food or people who are blessing their food or have mm-hmm. maybe some kind of spiritual or religious components that are tied into the food? Mm-hmm. Where do you think those originated from? And what maybe practices do you include with, you know, food production and, and, yes. and the development because it's not just the food it's about the mm-hmm. energy that in the 100%. creation I think is every bit as much my mom used to say when she she would make us cookies or something when I was a kid mm-hmm. she'd look at me and she'd say well we have to put the magic ingredient in it I'm like what's the magic yeah. ingredient she's like you got to put love in it yes I <laughs> love that yes a hundred percent and that's that's literally, I mean, that's part of a culinary alchemy. If I'm walking someone through how to start their day, you know, that intention, that intention of putting that energy and that love into that food is, it's not just even the secret ingredient, the magic ingredient, it is the core ingredient. You know, like what makes something that your mom or your grandmother, what makes that dish, that recipe taste so much better then when you do, even if you are following it to a T, you know, so often we're like, ah, oh, they left something out, you know, mm-hmm, they're trying to keep mm-hmm. the secret with them till the grave. And they didn't, you know, it's just their magic and their love is just going to taste a little different, you know, than it, then, then maybe you're, especially if you're, if you're just focused on getting it right, maybe once you put in that energy. So something that I tell people to do is, you know, when you get up in the morning, it's part of my daily, daily practice. You get up in the morning and you're going through your gratitude list, you know, instead of just kind of like go through, like, I'm grateful for my mom, my dad, like whatever it is, I, I want you to really think about, and it can just be three things, you know, but think about one, two, three things and really think about it until you connect from a physical place with that energy. So think about that person you love until you feel them and you feel that that energy, that feeling when they are right there with you, you're snuggling up with them. Or it could be a food, you know, you're thinking about how much you love mom lasagna, whatever it is, you know, and and you almost salivate because you're thinking about it and all those feelings come back. Now that's, that's the energy and the intention that I want you to take and then now infuse into your day, into your food, into your water, into your coffee or your tea or your smoothie, or that meal as you're prepping out for yourself or your family later, like you've now tapped and tapped into that energy. You've made a physiological connection to it, right? So you can, you can, you can bring it back up. Even if you're not in that moment thinking about how much you love that person or thinking about that yummy, amazing dish, you know what that feels like. All you have to do is just remember it, connect to it. And then now you channel that energy towards that food or water, or whatever it is that you want to do, but we're talking food right now. So you're channeling that energy back to the food, which then goes back into your own body, or into the bodies of the people that you love. Now that's that, that's the magic, you know, and that's, that's what I do with everything. You know, I do, I, that's what I do. I also do Reiki, obviously. So when you talk about blessing your food and that is to me not only essential, but it is it is that necessary ingredient. You know, whether you're blessing blessing with prayer or Reiki or energy, whatever it is, it's all the same. It's just beautiful, intentional energy. It's about um, just acknowledging gratitude for what you're about to receive um, and preparing your your body to receive it. So I think it's just it's wonderful, and I think we all can do it. You know, even if it's in our head, just saying thank you for that, or maybe even connecting to the energy I just just described. If you can just do that and just look at the food and just just send out that energy to it, you not only receive it, you also give it. You bring up a couple of points, and I I don't think I've ever disclosed this to anybody, but I have a meditation practice for many years, which people know about and that sort of thing, uh, which has added a great element to my life. Mm -hmm. But when I actually take the time before Mm -hmm. I consume my food and to Mm -hmm. really get into the energetics of appreciation and blessing it and, and and not to just the empty words, but actually feeling it. I actually go to places sometimes when I'm just about to have dinner, that's Mm -hmm. better than my 30, 40 minute meditation practice. There's an energetic activation. And I do believe it's 
when you have true appreciation, gratitude, or you're sending out the love to what you're doing or your practice or the, the, the active devotional service. Mm-hmm. A lot of people mm-hmm. think of devotional service as some sort of subjugation or that you are, you know, uh, being lower than, but what, right. what it really is, is an expansiveness that comes through and, and yes. through the activation this you can feel the energy flowing through your body and into your food. It's really beautiful that you've incorporated that. And I think that's where a lot of people get mistaken about devotion to spiritual teachers or devotion mm-hmm. to a religious philosophy or devotion to a family member or your partner or your children. Mm-hmm. The magic is in the process of that devotion, which opens up this whole vast array that is, I, I think, not available to people if they're operating from kind of a narcissistic, it's only me or whatever, it's food mm-hmm. is fuel and all this sort of stuff. They miss this very deep and rich aspect of life that um, I think where is where alchemy comes from. You've got a lot of things going on and I want to be mindful of your time. Tell me about some of the things that's up and coming for you. I know you got a lot of projects that are on the go and you're bringing out (laughs) some more creations for the world to enjoy uh, what it is that you do in the world. Can you share some of the things that are upcoming for you? Yes. Uh, thank you so much for asking. We, we, we have some exciting things that we're launching before the end of this month. So we've got, um, well, I've just had water, which is a, a separate health and wellness line that I have. And, and that has been a, like a, like a hero product. It's everything's just been in a packet and I call it everything that you need in a day. It is something that a recipe I developed for my clients years ago. Um, and you just add water to it and Voila, you have everything you need. But what we did was we we heard our consumers. Um, we we listened to what you guys said. And people were saying, can we get them in canisters? And now everyone's staying at home. You know, they're working from home. They're working remotely. So what I did was I deconstructed that formula. So that formula is just like, it's just yellow pea protein. And it's got like literally everything that you need. It's got all these super greens in it and antioxidants and and you know, probiotics, prebiotics, digestive enzymes, it's got everything. So what we did was I just deconstructed it. So you've got your pea protein and you have it in a neutral flavor for our vanilla lovers um, and then in a chocolate flavor, but then separately you have all your greens and then separate from that, you have all your antioxidants. So, you know, depending on where you're at in a day, you can, one scoop of each gives you your just add water. Or, you know, if you felt like, mm, kind of feel like I want to add something fizzy, to my greens today or to my antioxidants, then you can just scoop one of those and leave out the plant protein. So it just gives people, you know, more of an opportunity to be creative with their own own recipe. And it gives you a little bit more freedom. So if you're just not feeling chocolate, you don't have to. So we've got that. Um, And then we also have what I call an effervescent C. So it's like a fizzy vitamin C drink. It's sort of like an emergency, but healthier. Um, don't tell the emergency people I said that, but that's what it is. Mm-hmm. So we have that. And so that's for just add water. And then in my Serena Loves brand, we've got an app that is coming out that will basically be how you power the different programs I launch. So our first program is kind of like an ultimate health reset. And it's where you will stress less, sleep better and slim down in 28 days. And so there's like meal plans and shopping lists and recipes and a gratitude journal and some meditations and movement. There's a whole bunch of things and you can track it all on your, your, your watch, your Apple watch or your Fitbit. And so that, that program, which is the first of several that I'm, I'm launching, that'll all be powered through the Serena Loves app. And um, with that, we have supplements. So there are supplements that are designed to help support your adrenals. I call them love my adrenals love my sleep, love my calm, love my brain. So we've got these different supplements that will support you in that journey. And because of COVID and so many people coming to me for, you know, nutrition and immunity support. And actually I had COVID. I don't know if you know that. I don't no, know. I didn't know that. Yeah. Like it was a year ago, um, right when it kind of first landed here in LA and um, I obviously, you know, it was a it was a pretty crazy time a year ago, and um, and my sister had gotten it first. We were at a 
huge charity gala. She got it. And a couple of weeks after she got it, I got it. And we, of course, were completely quarantined. And so I just, you know, if you come to my home, it's sort of like a nerdy wellness center and I've got kind of everything here and all the different supplements. And so I have protocols for what we did to recover from that. And, and I realized so many people are coming to me for that. I, I need to just have like my own supplements that I trust, that I know that I vetted and I know exactly how it's processed. I know these are good products and they're not just regular. Let me just go to the, the local, um, you know, 24 hour pharmacy uh, and, and just get something off the shelf. Not to say that if you have no other options that that's not better than nothing. I mean, in some cases, depending on what's in it, it might be. But here I rib, I thought, let me just have my own so that people know this vitamin C, this vitamin D, this glutathione, these are going to be very supportive for your immune system. So we have seven products in our immunity line that we're also launching. So that's all happening, you know, um, by the end of the month. And I'm really excited about it. Really amazing. And of course, you have uh, Serena Loves TV. Yes. Where can people find you, connect, and what's serious? Serena Loves TV, all this sort of stuff. Can you kind of share with our listeners so they can kind of dial in and, and find out more? Because I'm, I think you're, I'm excited to kind of get m more involved and find out more about this component. Because I really feel, I grew up, I was fortunate mm -hmm. enough, I grew up in an environment where my mom put a lot of love and care and devotion into all the food mm -hmm. that she prepares and still does mm -hmm. to this day. Mm -hmm. And I really love that and admire it. So I, I oh. get it. And I think a lot of people don't know what that actually feels like or mm. what that can add as an element to their life and everybody's eating at home and all these sort of things. Mm -hmm. So um, share with us, give us the whole nine yards. Where do we follow you? Find out more and, and keep reminded. Cause I think we can hear this and say, oh, this is cool. But more importantly, they need to kind of tie into someone that's living and eating and breathing and doing this and producing this yes. every single day, because it, it serves as a reminder until we build the habit to yes. be present um, with our food. Yes, no, and I'm I'm so I'm so grateful to you. Thank you so much for having me here today, and just thank you for what you're doing to give people the tools that they need to live their best. You know, truly, especially from from their homes right now, if they're not able to get support outside of their homes. You know, everyone can find me on my Instagram which is Chef Serena Poon. And there, you know, you'll link over to, you'll see my Serena Loves TV. And that's basically, I do a lot of IG lives. You should come on. We should do an IG live. I'd love It'd that. It'd be super I'd fun. It'd be super fun. Yeah. And so it's been amazing because I really only, start, I've, I did Serena Loves TV in studio um, for about a year, almost two years, about a year, a little, almost two years until that got shuttered because of, the pandemic, but then we just shifted over to doing them as lives, which I'd never done before. I was really nervous and I was super sick with COVID and just kind of terrified and, and, and self-conscious, but I just did it anyway, because there's so many amazing people out there like you and, and other functional doctors and nutritionists and healers and meditation teachers, and just so many people that have so much value that they can share and people need the guidance. So I started doing that and that has become almost like a channel, you know, and um, on, on Instagram. And so we have guests, you know, every week that you can come and learn. And I can guarantee you, if nothing else, you will walk away with pages of notes, but we repurpose it all. Everything goes up on, on YouTube and on Facebook, you know, we clean it all up. So the audio is okay. And, and you can go back and watch and there's a library of information. So you'll find all of that on Instagram. Twitter and Facebook is the same. YouTube is the same, Chef Serena Poon. But, um, and my website is serenaloves.com and you'll find a lot there too. That needs a little bit of updating though, but you'll find a lot of things there too. And um, I'm recently on Clubhouse now. And my handle on Clubhouse is Serena Poon. There's no chef in front of it. And we'll be doing more there as well, just because it's a super fun place. I'm actually doing cooking classes on Clubhouse as opposed to on video, um, which, I, which is, it's been interesting. People actually really, they really love it. So it's fun. So you can come cook with me on Clubhouse. 
I love that idea. Of course, we're in the LA area, so I can't wait to have you over to the bio home and do some cooking and some fun, maybe on an IG live. I think it'd be yeah. super fun and maybe do, uh, so I've got fun. a great rooftop deck. We could have a little rooftop of food party. I think would be really fun. So um, for all our listeners today, I want to thank you for joining us. And I would encourage you to take these words of wisdom from Serena and add an extra element of love mm. and connection and devotion and conscientiously creating things with colors and really being expressive of gratitude it's really easy to get caught up in the chaos of the world but when you mm -hmm. stop and take pause and take a moment to create these alchemic creations you'll find mm -hmm. a new element to your culinary experience that i think is worthwhile living thank you serena for joining us today and sharing us with your wisdom it's it's so it comes out so uh, vibrant right out through the screen and i look forward to connecting in your future so with everybody thank else i uh, hope you enjoyed this edition of the awesome health podcast you know where to find us. If you like it, smash the like button, share it. And more importantly, we'll see you on the next episode. And now for a Bioptimizer's fixed digestion tip. Turn cultured foods into superfoods. Raw fermented foods like sauerkraut and low sugar live yogurt can be good for you, but rarely have enough of the right probiotic strains for therapeutic benefit. So here's a way that you can turn them into superfoods. What I do is I get some raw sauerkraut or a healthy yogurt. Ideally, you know, it's grass-fed or coconut-based. And you can empty three caps of P3OM into a container and mix it up thoroughly. Leave it at room temperature for a couple of hours before putting it back into the fridge. And what's going to happen is these probiotic levels will be multiplied. In fact, it doubles every 20 minutes. And then what you're going to get is you're going to have a food with strong proteolytic activity. To learn more about P3OM and why its patented strains make it the strongest probiotic available, go to www.bioptimizers.com. Thank you for listening to the Bioptimizers Awesome Health Podcast. You can find more information at bioptimizers.com. <laughs>